Hello, my name is Daniel Arroyo. I'm the Chief Software Officer at BCN3D. And today I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the new BCN3D cloud. To start, we're going to start with a standard account. And then uh, after that, we will explain a little bit of a Teams account as well. So what we have here on the screen is the dashboard of a standard account. Standard accounts are single user. Um, so there's only one user that controls the account. They can have any number of printers and you can have queues and clusters and so on, but, but uh, only one, one single user. Um, so here, let's start with the navigation bar. On the top here, we can see uh, the notifications area where the system will, will be giving you uh, important notifications about what's going on in your account. The next icon will be uh, access to support with three links. And the next will be your account um, icon which you can then use to go into uh, your account settings where you can change your password, change your emails, and so on. Um, the dashboard screen gives you uh, an overview of, of the platform, uh, your account. You, you can have here on the left uh, the number of uh, megabytes that you're using on your account, the number of printers registered, uh, quick access to statistics, uh, and also quick access to the VCN 3D Academy. On the bottom right, uh, an important icon is the chat widget, which allows you to um, create questions uh, such as the one here is how to change the hot end. So you, you write the question here and the system will respond with useful articles about that and uh, eventually connect you with a, with a person if the articles uh, don't help you. Well, um, with that, that's, that's all for the dashboard. Then uh, the next icon on the left will be the library. So we head over to the library where uh, this is a place where you would store all your 3D printing related files, such as STLs and G codes. You can organize them in folders, and then you can further organize your print files within a uh, STL. So for example, a, this door protection STL will have three uh, G code files that were generated from it. Um, this allows you to better organize your files and then uh, recognize when prints can be identified with, for example, this thumbnail heel here. When you upload a file such as an SDL to the platform, the platform will analyze it, give you some information about its size, uh, and as well as creating a thumbnail for it. Um, you don't have to do this association. You can um, upload SDLs uh, without print files, and you can also upload print files uh, without any association with SDLs. Now, um, these files, you can add notes to them, such as this one. Um, you can also download them whenever you need to. Uh, you can do things like rename, move, uh, see print history. Uh, I'm not sure if this has been printed. But um, you can see the, the history of the file. Um, and then finally, uh, with print files, you can then hit the print button which allows you to see uh, both printers that are online at the moment and ready to print, and then clusters, which is something that I will explain in a minute, um, that you can then send this print file to. So in the first example, let's, let's just go ahead and, and place this file in the queue of this printer. And maybe also for the next printer, we're gonna directly send it to print. So when we do that, uh, the next step after that will be to head over to the printer section where we can see an overview of our print farm. There you can see how um, this is the print that we uh, sent to print just now. The printer is now heating up and uh, starting the print process. And for the other printer, uh, by clicking on it, we can see its queue. And you can also see that's the, the same file that we placed in the queue before for this printer. Uh, this view gives you both access to see what your printers are doing, um, like printing, pause, and, uh, estimate time, current temperatures, material loaded, uh, type of uh, hot end loaded, and so on. And you can also uh, manage the, the printer's queue. In this one, uh, we have an item. So for example, in each item you can add tags. Uh, for example, print this in red. That can then be um, uh, managed by all you know other people using this. You can add uh, um, tags as well or notes, 
and then you know this allows you to better manage uh, later when you come in and print this you you'll be able to to check that um from here you can start the next print in the queue which is this is just the one and finally the queue also has uh, finished items so this is the items that were just finished or previously finished uh, on this queue you you get some information about what was printed um and it also allows you to maybe if you didn't like the print return it to your queue add a tag and so on so you know from here as well as the managing of the queues you can manage your print farm uh, and in a way that for example you could pause this print and you could also cancel this print from here um, other useful thing that you can do in this uh, in this tab is to uh, you can add notes to your printer you can see print history for this particular printer as well and you can share this printer sharing a printer allows other users uh, in the bcn 3d uh, cloud to be able to print uh, to see this printer and print with it and place items in its queue so this is a, a quick way to to share your printer with other people to basically add their emails hit invite and then they'll get a notification that they can use your printer um the next thing we can talk about is clusters so cluster is a special type of queue that basically lumps together uh, printers uh, of similar uh, characteristics uh, such as for example we have some example clusters here we have a cluster called printing volume 50 liters so all of our big printers are going to be put here we have another cluster for standard materials another for technical materials and so on and what this means is that you can then put uh, assign uh, in this case we have uh, no printers but you can assign a which printers you like to add to this cluster and once you've done that uh, any file that you put in this cluster could be picked up by any available printer so the first available printer in the cluster could then print um, that file so creating a cluster is, is very simple you just add uh, I like this you give it a description and then you add the devices you want to it so let's add these two devices um, and then that'll be it. Now, this anything you send to this cluster, right now we have no files, but anything you would send to this cluster could then be picked up uh, by the next available printer. In this case, the Epsilon W50 will be the next available printer. And if there were files in the line, you could just hit next print um, and it will just pick it up. As this one finishes, you could then uh, pick the next file in, in line. So this basically allows you to um, organize your print queues without really knowing which printer is going to end up printing the file uh, but you would know that this printer satisfies certain criteria which is the one you do define for the cluster so with that we will head over to the history tab the history tab is where you can see uh, what this account has been doing over time so related to printing so we have a, a printing that is ongoing right now but we also have print prints that have been finished uh, in the past and, and you can see information such as the time it took uh, the print mode the score that you gave it and where it originated you can add notes to this one for example this was a very short print um, these notes will stay here you can also select to print again on um, this the same exact file or then open it in the library in case you you wanted to um, added to a queue or other things here you can see um, the devices that was used and and you know all the useful information such as maybe a thumbnail of the design if the print file was associated with it um, here you can select you can filter by printer uh, or you can sort uh, by several criteria you can also download a, a csv which basically allows you to input this data into another program that may process this for for example uh, charging for your prints or knowing how much filament you consume and so on um, the last tab here is statistics so statistic is giving you an overview of what you're doing with your account uh, in terms of printing so print time and filament use are the, mo the two most important uh, pieces of data you can uh, select data ranges you can refresh at any time um, and then you can also filter by either uh, print model printer model or actual printer um, so if we uh, select each each of these we will see also more information when you select either a printer or a printer model 
Uh, not only will we see the print time and filament such as before, but we would also see uh, information such as uh, printer queue, uh, success ratios, uh, the printing modes used, and the um, material highlight combination uh, for the print for the prints done with this printer. So this is essentially a, uh, a standard account uh, made for you know, either a small business or a individual person with maybe one or two printers. Um, for large corporations, we also have a Teams uh, account, which is, uh, allows you to invite multiple people, assign roles and permissions, and then group your resources uh, in different groups. So for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log out of this user. Um, I'll log out with a user that has no team. And then uh, to create a team, you basically head over to uh, teams.bcn3d.com and you present it with the screen, which uh, basically shows you uh, how to create your team. So you give your teams a name. Um, in this case, let's call it B-O-T-T. -T. Uh, which one is your root name? Um, admins would be a good group name. Uh, we'll learn in a second about groups. And then your vanity URL. Your vanity URL is uh, you know, anything that's not being taken. Um, and it's always a, a quick way to go to your team. Uh, you, know, you, you access it via uh, teams.bcn3d.com slash whatever you, you pick here. So with that, we, create, we hit create team. Um, and then what we're going to be doing is head over to the uh, the team page. So this team was created. It's called the OOT team. Uh, we are gonna uh, log into it. Uh, you you have each each uh, team has a, a login page like this. Uh, you could also upload your own icon to replace this one here. Um, and I'll show you in a second how to do that. And then uh, everybody in this in this team can sign in using this URL. So once you get in. Um, in there, you'll basically be presented with the same uh, options or almost the same options we just saw, uh, except with the with one limitation, which is you are um, you can only see what you're allowed to see based on on the configuration of your team, and and I'll I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, this uh, upper here is a, a big change. Here is that it no longer says BCN 3D Cloud. You have the logo of your um, of your team as well as the name of your team on this uh, left, left, top left side of the screen. You also have uh, the group that you're in as well, as well as your role within the group. These are concepts that we we'll learn in a minute, but so that you know when you're in a team, this is a, a quick way to see uh, where you are. You, you're currently in the admins uh, group uh, as an IT admin. Uh, the rest is all the same. And uh, the options here on the left are all the same with the exception of a new one uh, called Workflows, which, which I'll talk about uh, in, in a minute here. Um, so we don't really need to go into each of these just yet uh, because they, they work the same way as with the standard account, just with the, uh, with the new, new uh, feature of allowing you to see uh, what, you, what you can see based on the configuration. But what we can do now is go head over to the configuration part of the team uh, to show you how a team is set up. So I'm an admin now. I basically have all the permissions, so I'm going to be able to go into every single option here and show you how to set it up. Obviously, in a regular team, not everybody's going to have all permissions. So you know, some people will not see all these options. Some people will basically not be able to go into the uh, configuration site either. Um, the first thing we see is another dashboard. This is the Teams dashboard. It, it gives you a quick overview of the printers that you have, the number of users, the storage, um, how much you've been printing, quick stats, and then you know some some also quick stat per group in this team. Um, in the next uh, section here is users. This is where you can see all the users that belong to your team. You see them here in a list. You can search for them. You can filter by group, um, and then, of course, you can invite new users. So if we hit invitations, um, you can see how it's very easy to invite people. There's two ways. One is create a manual invitation. Uh, at this point, you can just add emails, and those emails will receive an invitation to join your team. Or if you have a large team and you want to invite lots of people to it, 
then you simply upload an CSV file. This is also very useful. A CSV file not only allows you to uh, invite many people at once, but it also allows you to tell the system what group and what role these people uh, are, are going to be placed on. So it's, it's quite useful for um, organizations that have many, many users. Um, once you've invited your users, they uh, are placed here. You can see if they've uh, accepted the invitation or not. And they are also placed in this view. So even before they accept, you can go in and start placing them in groups and giving them roles um, after they, they, you invite them. So um, we can quickly click on um, this person, for example, it belongs to seven groups. So uh, this is a good, a good point to, to talk about some of the concept, concepts of groups and roles. So a group is a place where you uh, group resources and users. So you can place printers in there. You can place files, um, folders, and so on in a group. And then a user can belong to one or more, or more than one group such as this one, for example. And uh, a user always has a role in a group. And uh, our system defines it so that you can have a different role in, in every group. So for example, this user is an engineer designer in the mechanical group, so printing technicians and admins, um, and, and pretty much in every other group there. Um, so what this does is that when this user is acting uh, as part of the group mechanical, he's going to have several things that he can do. Um, but when they go into, into admins, then uh, they, can, they can have all the things. Here you can add this user to more groups. In this case, there's only one group the user is not on. So we could add it. And then this is where we decide when the user is in the 3D print lab group, you know, what role do we want to give it? this user. You can also, of course, edit um, this role, change it, or uh, just make it any, anytime you change something here, it, it makes it a custom role. So you can you can start with a pretty fine role and then just slightly change it just for this particular user. Um, so with that, this is users. Now we head over to groups. Uh, we've been talking a lot about groups, so I'll explain what groups are. So again, a group is a collection of uh, resources. In this case, we have two types of resources, printers and folders. And also, uh, it's a place where users can be part of. So a user belongs to, like I said before, one or more groups. And a group can have folders and printers. Now, a group gives you a uh, visibility. So it tells you what you can see. Uh, when you belong to a group, you can see everything that's in that group and any subgroups as well. So um, what you can do, though, with this stuff you can see is given by the roles, which we'll talk about next. But just keep in mind that by, the, by, the, by virtue of belonging to a group, you're now able to see certain things. Um, the graph view of groups, it's uh, quite interesting because it gives us an overview of dependencies between them. So... Uh, if, we, if we belong to the admins group, we basically can see all resources in our team because this is the top. So you can see everything in 3D Print Lab, you can see everything in supply chain, in, even in production. Now, people that belong to the supply chain group, they cannot see uh, at anything that's on admins, engineering, or 3D Print Lab because they, you can only see what's in your group or any subgroup. And of course, if you're in production, then you can only see things that are in production. Now, this is a quite complex group setup. Uh, the team's account doesn't need to be so complex. You can have it, you can make it as easy or as complicated as your organization needs. Um, you can make it as easy as just having one group and having all your resources in one group and then basically just have people um, you know, take different roles in that group. So people will still be able to, to do different things um, but you may not need to divide your resources in, in groups and subgroups. Or you can have groups in just one level, uh, which basically allows you to divide resources so they, they cannot see each other, um, but you, know, you may not need this uh, complication of uh, multiple subgroups and so on. Uh, but, it's, but it's there if you need it. Um, so 
this is group. Uh, it's very easy to create a, a group. You basically click this button, uh, select the parent. Uh, you, know, you, you always have a root uh, group, which if you remember, we gave it a name when we created the team. So it will, have, it will always have one parent. Uh, it could be the admins group, which is the root one, or it could be anything else. So every time you create a group, you need to give it a parent. Um, and then you give it a name and a description, and, and that's basically all it is. A, a group can have more than one parent, as you can see here. Um, there's no limitation there. And here in this tab, you can also edit uh, the name and description. You can see uh, uh, what group this group belongs to, how many groups it owns, and then uh, how many users are part of this group. Uh, with that, we go over to roles, which is, uh, as I explained before, a role is uh, defines what you can do with the resources that you see. So, you know, again, reiterate groups allow you to know what you can see, and a role tells you what you can do with it. So, we have many, many roles here. I, I don't want to go over to uh, over all of them. Uh, there's a description for each of them, and it basically uh, determines the things you can do. I'll give you some quick examples. There's a role for viewing printers, another one for starting prints. So you may be able to see the printers but not starting prints, or um, you may be able to start prints but not manage active jobs. So you know maybe you're uh, we want to let you start the print, but we don't want to let you cancel it. Or even better, you can um, place a, a file in a queue, but then you let somebody else print it. So all of that is is possible by selecting. Uh, multiple permissions uh, depending on the role. You can have many roles, basically to create a role just click on new role, give it a name and select what this role can do um, and that's about it. And then you can use this role when you add users to groups like we saw before. Uh, the next step will be 3D printers. This is a place where you manage the printers that belong to your team. So when you register a printer um, you'll be able to say uh, this printer belongs to this team and I want to place it in, in, in such group. Um, this is the place where you come to change that. So if you would like to change the group that this printer is assigned to, you can do it here. Um, or you can delete it from the team and free it up for maybe assign it to a person in a standard account or move it to another team. Um, in the folders tab, is, this is where you create shell for this folder. So, uh, a shell fo folder it can be in one or several group. Uh, and as you remember when I explained groups, if you put a, a folder in a group, the parent group can also see that folder. So just, just we we'll, we'll, we'll should keep that in mind. Um, but again, this is for share folders. And of course, within these folders, you can create all the folders as well. So anything that you place in there uh, will be seen by everybody in your group. Uh, Every user also has a private folder, so you don't have to share everything in, in a team, but this allows you to, to be able to share things. Workflows, um, we'll, we'll see what workflows are in a second uh, when we go back to the cloud, um, but workflows are a very specific type of queue that allows users to take uh, different actions in every step of the printing process and allows different users to take those actions. So for example, one user could be in charge of slicing files, another user could be in charge of placing them in print queues or clusters, and another user could be in charge of printing them. Um, a workflow is sort of, a, of an order. So somebody, uh, potentially another user, could uh, say, I want to print this SDL. Um, it gets placed into a workflow, and then, like I explained, uh, somebody will slice it, place it in a queue, and print it. And then at the end, somebody will inspect the object and inform the, the, requ the original requester whether the print was successful or not. So that's essentially what a workflow is, but we'll see it in action in a minute. This is the interfa interface where you actually create it. Um, so this is where you create workflows and assign them to groups. Um, the next stuff is analytics. So for, for a fleet, there's a lot of analytics to look at. Uh, first off is Spring History. This is uh, similar to the standard account that we saw before, with the difference that now we're talking about uh, a team. So you see everything here that be, that's being printed in your team. You can, of course, sort by uh, printer, group, uh, even user. Um, but here's a view of everything that has been printed. You have a quick uh, print activity tab as well. Uh, 
And then if we continue exploring the other options, we have groups, group analytics, uh, where you'll be able to see uh, per group, uh, you know, what's going on in terms of printing time, printing uh, material, uh, the print queues in that group, and so on. Um, <clears throat> we continue with printer. So here you select a printer in your in your queue. Uh, I'm sorry, in your team, and you'll be able to see for that printer uh, the same kind of stats that that we talked about before. Um, users allow you to drill into a specific users. Um, so you can you can see when they join, when they last logged in, what, how many folders, design print files they've done, what groups they belong to. Uh, and some quick staff, how much print time, how many print jobs the user has done, uh, and then how much filament they've used. Um, so this is a quick way of, of, of inspecting um, users in your fleet. And finally, workflow. So if you go to workflow, it would allow you to say, you know, how many, how many total jobs have been completed, so how many successful, how many fail, um, what is the feedback that was sent to the user, and then things like print time and filming use for that workflow. The last option here is a basic settings uh, tab for your, for your team. It, it's here where you can upload your uh, logo, change your name, um, see your account information, how much storage you have, how many printers, users, and so on. Payment information as well. And then here you can assign uh, the group and the role for new users. So when you invite a user and you don't actively uh, assign them a group and a role, they get placed into this uh, default one. And then finally, a little bit about SSO. So SSO is something that you can request uh, for us and we can work with your IT department to set up. So we support Google, Microsoft, and any SAML2 compatible SSOs. Uh, and once we configure it, you'll be able to see some options here uh, for uh, you know accepting users uh, uh, through SSO. Um, so with that, this would be the configuration section of your team. So we're going to head over to the cloud, um, and uh, just to show you a few of the things uh, that are different here. So starting with the library, uh, the major thing different here is that your main your uh your main view of the library shows you groups and this is the groups that you can see uh by being in the admins group is basically everything so you have 3d printed lab and then from here you can see and see if there are some uh, shared folders so in the admins uh, group you have everybody can see and you have an admins uh, folder within there you can then create new folders and upload files and anybody in admins will be able to see that uh, we can see if engineering also has an engineering folder. Um, everything else in here is going to be the same as in the standard account, the way you print, the way you organize your files. The only thing to note here is that you can then navigate your group structure here to see um, the folders within the groups. Uh, I also want to demonstrate that when I change my group, this view changes. So I was an admin, so I'm going to go to engineering. Now, I can only see engineering, mechanical, and product design groups. If I actually go to product design, I believe that's a, a f yeah, I can only see the product design uh, folders. Then you always have a private folder as well that you can go in, and this, whatever you put in here, will be private to you as any, anything here is not shared. And then you have public folders. Um, these are folders that are shared across the entire team. It doesn't matter in what group you are, you can always see that. Uh, so these are uh, true public folders. Then uh, let's go back to admins. So this is the root group. As you can see here, we can see everything. Um, so that's that's about that. Then with printers, is also the same. We can only have these two printers. Um, if we move to another group, it's possible that uh, only one printer remains because the other one wasn't there. If we go to another group, um, then no printers are there. So here's another way of showing you how uh, what you can see is determined by the group that you're in. Um, clusters is the same as standard, uh, so we don't have to go there. And then the only thing we, we need to pay a little bit more attention here is workflows. So we explained a little bit what workflows were, but now I want to show you. 
So when we go into our workflow, we see this uh, tab here, which these are the steps. So uh, a user, let's try to go into a library and show you if we can find here, there are some designs. Let's say we want to print this. So I can add it to workflow. Um, and then I can click it. We only have one workflow here. And I can just click on add. I'm not going to do that just yet. But um, that's the way you would add it. Uh, so when you go to workflow, the file will be in this queue. These are slice spending uh, files. So these are STLs that people have uh, indicated they want to print. Um, these STLs could have user notes. So the user can tell you things that they want you to know. Uh, you know, what user put them in and when they were created. And they are sorted in order. of uh, It's like a queue. So uh, first in, first out. Well, so it, the person that's managing this slice pending has the right permissions, presumably, to be able to download this file. And uh, so you basically click download, get the STL computer and slice it, slice it according to the, the user notes. And after that, all you do is upload print file. So you can analyze the STL and maybe you don't like the orientation, uh, maybe you want to uh, tweak it, um, you know, re-upload it, uh, or if you uh, think it's fine and you were able to uh, create a print file from it, then you can upload the print file that you created for, for this. You can always report as invalid um, basically, it will tell uh, the user what happened, and then that will get removed from the queue, so they can then maybe fix it and add it again. Um, and then, you know, you can email the user directly if you want to have a, a deeper conversation, and you can add print notes to it. Uh, print notes is, is, you know, in case maybe you, you leave, uh, if you're just analyzing the, print, the SDL, but somebody else is going to print it, and you can uh, leave print notes uh, for that person. For example, you know, use X machine or make sure the machine uh, is clean or something like that. Um, and then finally, you upload the print file. When you upload the print file, the uh, file moves to the next section. And this could be the same person managing it or a different person. These are files that are ready to print. So these are G-code files. These are now being sliced. Now, you could also send a file directly to this step if you add a g-code file uh, to your to your workflow then it, it it obviously skips the slice printing and it goes directly into ready to print so that's also possible this tells you print time it also maintains the order um, and from here what you can do is um, you know see the print notes you can email the user you can report as invalid discard it um, discard it basically means you you don't like this print file because you've analyzed it. Um, and then what you want to do is, is have it sliced again. So you discard it, it goes back to the previous step. Report as invalid, it goes back to the previous step. Or you can print. A print basically uh, asks you, where do you want to print it, right? You want to print it to a pr We have two printers that are currently ready to print. I mean, we know they have two files in queue, but if you have the right permissions, you can actually skip the queue and print. Or you can place it at the end of the queue. Uh, we can also add it to a cluster. We okay, have a few clusters here. Or it, you could actually move it to a different workflow as well. So if, if you wanted to, it's possible. If you have more than one workflow, just move it to a different workflow. Um, once you've placed this file, then it goes to the next tab. It goes to the in queue tab. So here um, we have two queues in one. So the first queue we have is the workflow queue. So this is the order in which the file was processed in this queue. But then these files are now potentially in a printer queue, such as this one. This is the first in this printer, the second on that printer, the first on this, and so on. They could also be in a, in a cluster. It will then uh, be put here as well. So it basically tells you that you know, this is the third file um, in this workflow that, has, that is in queue, ready to be printed. And it's currently uh, in the first position in that printer. So you can go view it. Um, and again, from here, you can remove it from the printer queue because you decided not to do it after all. Um, or just view it, view this queue, and start the print. When they actually go to printing, 
you'll be able to see them here. We don't have anything actively printing right now, but this essentially will show you all the files that initiated in this printing workflow that are currently printing. So you can then see their progress, how they're doing, and so on. It's, it's very useful if a user comes and calls you and asks, well, how's my file? No. Then you can say, well, it's currently printing and it has three hours left. Um, once they've been completed, they will go to the Finish tab. In the Finish tab, um, you will then be able to review the file, um, and then you can either mark it as success, uh, tell the user that it was successful, they can come pick it up, or say, look, it this failed. And uh, you can say, look, it failed, and you, you have to resubmit it. Or a third option is you retry. You say, well, it failed, but I don't want to tell the user yet, I'm going to retry it. Um, you know, you want to return it to the queue, or you just want to start over and print it again. Um, so those are the options that you have here. And um, you have some information about the file that, also, again, is useful if uh, you know, the, the requester will, will call you and ask. And finally, here you can download a CSV file as well, uh, which is very useful to input this into a, a billing application. For example, the CSV will have information about uh, who requested the file, how long it took to print, how much material it used. Uh, this, this will definitely give you a, a lot of data to, to be able to, to charge that person uh, through, through a billing app. Um, I think with this, uh, we, we are done with this demo. I hope you have enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you try it out. And, and if you have any questions, then I will show you one more time. This, this is the way to contact us. So thanks a lot for listening, and uh, we'll, we'll see each other in another webinar in the future. Bye-bye.